beautiful evening that you've given us for racing here at Gateway International Raceway. And Father Greg keeps getting their game face on and getting pumped up for today's race. The stage has been set here at Gateway. Drivers are starting to strap themselves in. And we'll be ready to go racing when we come back. So the engines have fired on the 43 cars that survived qualifying earlier today. And we've got a treat for you tonight. Not just one in-race reporter, we've got two. In fact, they're teammates. There's the shot of Brendan gone. And we'll also have a camera and a radio with Stephen Wallace. And we'll talk to both of them when we come back to get this race started. Brendan gone, Rusty Wallace up in the ESPN booth. You got us. Boss, how you doing tonight? Pretty good, buddy. Hey, you've talked all week long about how you love this racetrack so much, and you've won here in the truck series. Man, you got to be excited for tonight's race. I'm real pumped up tonight, boss. We got about, I'd say, at least a thousand U.S. Adults associates sitting right here in turn one. We're passing them right now, and we got a great race car. We set this bad boy up to run at night. But this first quarter, hey, Steve, well, I'm a little nervous. You know, uh, I got a U.S. Adults bumper in front of me. How about we not scare your daddy tonight? I'll do a little Steve Wallace run to the front with you. Man, we'll sure try and do that. You know, this is a real cool race for us. We're ready to rock. I think we got a good car. All right, Brendan, I got an ESPN mailbag question for you, and it comes from Drew in Lansing, Michigan. The question is, during a race, do you guys talk to each other about the track and how your cars are handling? You know, not normally. We don't communicate that often. I do remember, though, a couple years ago, 2004, a, a certain code uh, partner of mine, old Rusty Wallace at Bristol, called me in the middle of a race. But other than that, normally we're focused, my spotter, the Batman on the radio, crew chief on the radio. So normally we're not going to communicate unless there's something really important that we want to do at the end of a race to get a little strategy. All right, Stephen, you got any final words for Brendan? I'll run to the back of it. <laughs> Don't run the back. Okay, both, both of you guys have a great race, and uh, be kind to each other out there. Thanks, Bob. And there you see the two cars, and Steven will start 24th, Brendan 26th, and our man over the wall tonight will be the front tire changer for Stephen Wallace's number 66, Mark Hollywood Armstrong, and uh, yeah, there he is. And yeah, they don't call him Hollywood for nothing. <laughs> always likes to look sharp, and he does. Pounds in the right side, and Andy, I think they'll probably get down around nine pounds in the left-hand side tires. Takes a couple laps to get them up to speed. Yeah, they've been lean and green since the drop of the green flag. Take a look at the, the 66 of uh, Stephen Wallace. He has managed to move up from uh, his starting position up to 14th. You can see his cycle right there, guys. Yeah, I'm watching his car right now, Andy. It is just flat flying. It looks the same as it did to me at Milwaukee. It's just on the tires. And he has passed 11 cars right now. He's moved up to 14th in the cars. He's got that U.S. Fidelis car that's flying right now. Yeah, he dinged up the right side of his primary car in practice last night. And when he came back in the garage after running this car for one lap, he said, I think I like this car better than my primary. Well, as he continues to move towards the front, uh, obviously Kyle picked up some spots. That's Here we are at U.S. Fidelis Pink. <laughs> Going to work. Mark Hollywood Armstrong, and he talked about something you are concerned about. Brakes, brakes, brakes. So the Aaron's lucky dog is the 66 of Stephen Wallace, so he'll get to come back around, and that will put a total of 15 cars back on the lead lap. We have a total of eight cars that are out of this race right now as uh, they're fighting for that lucky dog position. 15 cars with Stephen Wallace being the last on the lead lap. Let's go on board with uh, Stephen Wallace. Been in front of you, go low. There you go. Come on, come on. Caution's out, caution's out. I'll tell you what, that could have been a lot worse, guys. Take a look, that's Scott Legacy uh, Jr. on the 11 underneath. Oh, oh, got oh. Into him. Here we go. Hang on. Ow. Ah, got spun. Unbelievable. So our third caution comes out, and there's a lot of damage to the rear of Stephen Wallace's number 66 in power. Man. And I was worried about that outside group of these restarts, guys. It just happens. Side, Bill, left side. Stephen was up to 10th position when the caution comes out after he uh, gets hit in that uh, left, right, left rear corner pass. 
Well, there's bad. Whoa, oh, dang. I, I got a sense here that uh, Steven's not real happy with Scott Lagacy. Well, he's just got to use his head right now. He's hot. This is a big race for him with the sponsors being here. And just really upset. Yep, here we go. And I'm sure NASCAR is going to be looking to see if anything. I just a little tight and like the way he was racing there. Yeah, hasn't made any contact yet. He really needs to get that car to pit lane and they can work on it. Yeah, he's just really upset right now. And he's just got to control his temper, get it in. Like I said, it was a big, big race. And a fast car, but. Go here, quit playing around up there. Go. Okay, let's go back and take another look from the outside. You see, drop down in this corner right here. And there's, you know, it's just hard racing. It looked like the 11 car just moved up the racetrack a little bit. It's awful bumpy down there. It's, it's really hard to run side by side and get into turn one. Well, Scott really didn't do anything wrong, Andy. Take a look at this. He gets down, and this is a classic just get loose. Yeah, and, there, and there's just not a lot of room there. I mean, Steve was trying to keep, you know, he's wanting this spot. Steve was trying to get this spot, so he's not going to give him an extra amount of room. They're racing. Yeah, look Scott, at Tony. Scott just got loose. Let's take a look at it one more time. Gets down in there, very close to Steven. We talk all the time about this thing you have to be careful of. Yeah, see, should, see the back end just jump out there. Yeah. Hold the break, hold the break, Look hold at that, break. that was 34. Tony Raines making a nice move to keep from getting involved in that as well. One more view. You can see, they're just really racing hard down in here, trying to get the advantage. There, yeah. Yeah, I know it looks bad, and, and especially it looks bad from Steven's seat. You can understand the frustration. Well, we've got the word from NASCAR that uh, crew chief uh, and driver, Brian Berry and Steven, will be uh, called to the trailer. Yeah, I never liked that. Been there a few times. Take a look on board with our crew cam. There's Hollywood Armstrong putting a little bit of bear bond on it. So as they continue the repairs, as we said, we're under our third caution here with 86 laps complete of 200.